now that we've looked at the calculations and we've looked at all the consolidation journal entries and we have our starting point as the parent and the subsidiary's trial balances, we can prepare the financial statements. The consolidated financial statement affected most by the interim acquisition is the consolidated SPLOCKY. So if you refer to that for the P-Limited Group, consolidated SPLOCKY for the year ended 31 December 20X9. What is my key principle behind every single line item? 100% P plus 100% S plus plus minus consolidation journals. And if you refer back to what I said when we did the at acquisition consolidation journal entry for the ordinary shares, that journal entry will have a significant impact on the line items in the consolidated splocky. Line by line, we start by adding 100% P to 100% S. This is good exam technique, add 100% P, 100% S. All the amounts with a P or an S next to it indicates that it's the amount coming from the separate trial balances of the parent and the subsidiary. That immediately earns some marks when you have to do a consolidated splocky and it's your starting point. Then you start to adjust for the effect of consolidation journal entries line by line. As you start doing more and more questions, you will be able to make these adjustments without first having to write all the consolidation journal entries. If the consolidation journal entries are not required in the question, it's going to take a lot of time to first write them and then answer what is required. So practice to be able to do this without first always having to write all your consolidation journal entries as well. Now in journal one, so this is how you use your textbook. When there's a little J reference at the end of an amount, it refers you to the consolidation journal entry and you need to see how that journal entry changes the line item. So whenever you see that little J reference, go to the consolidation journal entry, see what you did, see that there was a debit to revenue in journal one and now the effect of that debit to revenue in journal one is to deduct that amount from the combined total. That is the revenue earned by the subsidiary in the three months before acquisition date which is included in the TB revenue of 630,000 Rand so you are eliminating that because it got eliminated as ad acquisition equity and its revenue earned by the subsidiary before the group was formed. Now that principle will then apply line by line to all the entries with the J1 reference. This is where we eliminate the three months before acquisition date cost of sales. This is now in the other income. There's no amount to eliminate because if you remember, there was no other income of the subsidiary included in the before acquisition date column. There was only that fair value adjustment on the investment property and that's all in the since acquisition column. So in other income, there's nothing to eliminate coming from journal one. In administrative expenses, there was that 10,000 Rand administrative fees that we eliminate. We're taking it from administrative, administrative expenses and then the same for other expenses. So all those that I've highlighted there is all the amounts included in your before acquisition column where you did the allocation of the income and expense items. And that is the effect of the interim acquisition. The other elimination journal entries is exactly what you've seen before in chapter 4. So the effect of the interim acquisition is that your before acquisition date profit for the year items needs to eliminate line by line. And the main reason for that is because your starting point will be the income and expense items of the subsidiary for the entire year. But the portion before acquisition date 
has to eliminate. If you page down for the rest of the consolidated splocky, just see this other journal one effect, which is on the income tax expense. That is the first three months calculated income tax expense. And you also started on that line item with 100% B plus 100% S. Then, as I've said before, your consolidated splocky is not complete until, until you did this attribution portion at the bottom. Now, when we did the consolidation journal entries, we already spoken about the non-controlling interest and specifically profit attributable to NCI. And there I've indicated the amount that will be presented in this blocky as journal 11 plus journal 12, which is your profit attributable to the ordinary share NCI added to that the profit attributable to the preference share NCI and you balance back to the amount attributable to the parent because we have no other comprehensive income these two sections of amounts attributed will be the same. The consolidated SFP is not highly affected by the interim acquisition because you consolidate at 31 December 29, where you will add 100% of P to 100% of S for all those closing balances coming from the trial balance. So all these amounts with the P and the S next to it represents 100% P plus 100% S coming from their respective trial balances. Something I want to point out is this 14,500 elimination coming from Journal 6. Go back to Journal 6, see what we did there. We said debit shareholders for dividends, credit dividends receivable. The effect of that consolidation journal entry on the line item is to eliminate the 14,500 from the other current assets of the parent and the 14,500 from the shareholders for dividends from the subsidiary. Your goodwill is again a net amount being the 19,300 that originated through the at acquisition consolidation journal entry ordinary shares and against that you've offset the gain from bargain purchase from the at acquisition consolidation journal entry preference shares.